homes, which puts age limit on visitors. This is something I feel really, really strongly about and I want to understand it a bit more. And I'm joined now by social media campaigner June Slater. June, good morning. Lovely to see you. I know mm. you feel as strongly as I do about this. It's not getting the attention it deserves, is it, post-pandemic? What a state our care homes are in. Um, considering the industry was already 140,000 carers short, sure, I'm absolutely aghast that they have the nerve to sack 20,000. I'm looking at testimonials here from management of various care homes where they've sent um, letters of commendation to carers uh, where relatives, friends and other staff and the, the residents themselves have thanked them profusely for their continued care. And these people are sacked and down the road. Now, you talk about government U-turns. I'm really anticipating that a government makes a U-turn on this because I think a government that's making U-turns is a strong government, a government that's listening, that's accepting that it can't get all the things right. We are victims of them getting many things wrong for two years. So if Liz Truss is U-turning, let's hope coffee can do the same. Because at the end of the day, this is one issue that needs a massive U-turn on. Reinstate the carers, give them a bung. We can send money for weapons. We can send it to carers, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Apologise. Get them back in the industry. We've lost good people with years of experience. Add to that, I don't think people realise just how much this impacts on the rest of our healthcare. Currently, 13,000 beds in the NHS are occupied by people who are fit enough to be released. Most of these people will be released into care homes, but as you've said, because they're still continuing with restrictions, they can't go back. And some staff shortages um, don't help that matter. But the thing about the restrictions, some care homes are using this because it's easier to run the care home without visitors coming in and out. Now, the trouble is a lot of these daily visitors, and again, I've got testimonials here from people in message box, um, they actually fed some of the dementia patients. They made sure they ate the breakfast. What's happening now, carers are telling me they've only got the time to change their incontinence pads in the morning, then they leave them sat there. They're not dressing them because that takes time. They're leaving people in bed. Um, I've got a harrowing story of a man who went in for respite. Respite, that's a limited period. Sadly, we locked down and he was left there. He was in a wheelchair. His relatives used to get him out and support him to walk just to get his muscles moving back in the chair, back into bed. He had a life. He watched the birds in the garden. He had his family visiting him. He was left so badly in a care home for months on end that when they went to see him, his legs were actually folded up underneath his knees. He couldn't even straighten them out. That's a care home understaffed. That's a care home suffering from rules they should be challenging, not Absolutely. accepting. And that's and my gripe. I don't know about you, June, but I've never met a poor care home owner. Some of the richest people I know personally own care homes. They are very profitable businesses. Um. The thing is, when you think the cost that they accept for meals per day is between four to six pounds, six pounds being the high end, they're the Rolls Royce of um, mm. care home facilities. Um, there's, where's the profit going? Uh, let's make a bit less money. Let's treat this a bit more vocational. When you think um, that if you want to know how strongly the public feel about this, the Together Declaration, that was responsible for bringing a halt to the mandate in the first place for the health workers, uh, are bringing out a new campaign about the sacked care workers. We are not going to let this go. We, members of the public, are going to fight tooth and nail for yet another U-turn by the government to reinstate these good, decent people with years of experience who were left with their own lives in tatters, using food banks, unable to seek employment. Not everybody's happy about being sacked when they've done anything uh, bad even. So when you've been sacked and you haven't done anything wrong, let's just retrack here to the drug agencies Normally, the, the big pharmaceutical companies, let's just remember one thing about these industries. They are investment companies that happen to make drugs. So when we're following guidelines, remember that. When you get a drug company 
that is basically selling a product that doesn't do the job it's supposed to do, mm. there should be questions asked. When you get every other single drug on the market that comes with health warnings that have been monitored for five to ten years and mm. the general public are being not stronger than persuaded, insisted upon to take a medicine when they've said, hang on a minute, you know, normally this takes longer, I'd like to wait. But and do you think, um, James, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but do you think those care home workers, young, a lot of them very young, who left because they didn't want to have the COVID vaccine because maybe they'd had COVID and they had a natural immunity, they didn't want it, will they come back now? Or are they just feeling too demoralised and frankly insulted that they were having to do that? Will they come back if they're asked to come back? I think there's mixed reactions there because at the end of the day, what you've got to weigh up here as far as health is concerned, in European countries, I had a second home in Austria. If I was in Austria now uh, showing an antibody test for uh, antibodies in my bloodstream, I wouldn't be asked to get the vaccine because as I spoke to my Austrian GP, he said you wouldn't need it because you'd already have protection and we have to be careful that people don't end up with ADE, antibody dependent enhancement. Now, if as a country, a very well run country, may I add, um, if they can acknowledge these health benefits of having recovered from a virus, why isn't our government, why is our government so blase and careless as to insist that every single person ought to have it, despite yeah. the fact that natural immunity after recovery yeah. is apparent? Well, it's certainly something, it's certainly a topic in terms of care homes that seems to have been swept under the carpet and nobody seems to want to get these people back. We need them back. June Slater, don't we, in order to get the NHS moving. The knock-on effects of this are enormous. Thank you so much for your contribution. If you do want to get in touch with June, she's, she's very busy on social media, particularly on Facebook. And as you hear, she hears from all sorts of families all the time uh, about these particularly distressing stories.